Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey, welcome everyone to episode 9 of Shunya 1. It's our ninth episode here and we have a very special guest today. I'm happy to introduce to you Akanksha Srivastav, very old friend of mine. Also a prominent person of our same startup e- ecosystem and we know a bunch of people playing in this same ecosystem. That's why we've been connected. So happy to have you here, Akanksha. How are you doing? Thanks, Shiladitya. Thanks for inviting me here. I'm very excited to be a part of your endeavor and I hope it goes a very long way and builds bridges between entrepreneurs and the startup ecosystem. So wow. Okay. That's, thanks. That's a, you got a little bit of pressure on you. Today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. This week's have been about pressure too. I TechCrunch just announced their podcast and I'm like, damn, we have competition. They've really? got competition. Oh, man. Yeah, TechCrunch mm. India podcast? No, the US. Oh, the US podcast been going on. They had, they've had one uh, stuff going on. So Steve Gilmore used to do a podcast oh. for them. Like, Yeah, but they relaunched it. But anyway, they're That's taking fine. away my thunder. So oh. <laughs> anyway, today's show is going to be awesome. And sure. we're going to talk about some very interesting stuff. Akansha, you've obviously been an entrepreneur about 16 years now. That's I think right, 16 years. That's how long uh, you've been running your own marketing firm and marketing startup. Yeah. Uh, way, of, like you said, way before it was cool to be an entrepreneur, just like all of us <laughs> folks here. <laughs> so tell us about your journey so far. And I know you're doing something really interesting. Uh, tell us where people can find you and what your current endeavor is. Uh, quickly, if you can just give us a background sure. so before we jump in. Sure. So I've been doing this 16 years, long before, you know, startup, you know, as a term became very cool and entrepreneurs were cool. At that point in time, you know, my parents just looked at me up and down and thought that, oh my God, I'm not getting a job. And that's why I'm just going solo. And even today, a lot of my extended family still thinks that I'm a freelancer because I can't get a stable job. That's what they really think. But then, yeah, it's been hell of a ride. 16 years, uh, I've been consulting brands on their branding and strategy and, you know, market entry into India and worked with tons of startups, VCs, so no both sides of the table. And uh, yeah, it's been a pretty picture with its own challenges, but I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. And uh, of course, lots of uh, information about what I do, about clients, about journeys, about brand launches is all there on azureonline.net. And something very, very interesting and something I'm very passionate about, which I'm doing right now, which we'll talk about, that's there on Akanksha against Harrisman.com. Wow. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. That's for, that's where we can find all the information for today's show. Yep. But I think we'll jump, uh, I'll touch upon the marketing bit of yep. just a little bit uh, before we get into uh, the larger topic we want to talk about today. Over all these years, clearly, like you said, you worked with tons of brands and tons of startups also and larger companies. Do you think startups and founders today still understand how to do marketing? No. No. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you. So I run Or how to brand or, yeah. you know, all the stuff you help yeah. them. So, uh, when I started off and I said I want to launch a brand strategy firm, people would often ask, you mean to say an advertising firm? You mean to say a communications firm? And I would tell them, no, it's a brand strategy firm. Pretty much nothing's changed in 16 years. Even today, people mistake, you know, coloring and logo for branding. Wow. With all due respect to most startups and most large corporates, they are very, very good at building the skills or building the products they want to build, but they're really sad at branding themselves. They don't have a long-term vision. And that's a, you know, strangely that uh, struggle has only increased after Google because everybody thinks they're a branding expert Mm. just because (laughs) you can Google and you can read about it. So what would you say are the biggest mistakes people make in this area? Not having a long-term vision. Okay. And not uh, trusting the experts with, you know, what they need to do. Okay. Because you can't be knowing it all. So if you're good at building a tech product or if you're good at building certain skills, it's not necessary you're an expert at branding and marketing. Right. You need to be able to trust the experts with it. You need to be able to research and study. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Yeah. So I think, no, again, I'm actually one of those guys. I do not Aren't understand branding. I don't either. So... And I was actually the one who made, yeah. like most founders, I think, made my own logos and <laughs> basically said, this is what represents my brand. And yeah. it's, it's, it's it. I know it. Yeah. So obviously I don't. I, I'm just saying that. But it's an innate feeling. How do you, how do you change how as an external person, how do you come in and tell another founder who's so close to his product and his vision and his enterprise? How do you go and 
advise him that this is what you should be doing how do you change their mind isn't it like a big rewiring which has to happen yeah so in 16 years uh, i have never made a cold call for any branding projects right. uh, one thing which has really worked in my favor is i've always gone with a reference so we've just moved from one client to another just by a reference so as it is when you go in you're going in with some credibility and some trust mm-hmm. the way to do this is to become like a part of the team and not behave like an external consultant and try and figure out the vibes even internally and what's happening within the marketing team what are the challenges of the design team what are their tech challenges what are the challenges with the audience if you work with them as part of their team and give them the feeling that you're one and you're not an external consultant who's from a large consulting firm who's just handing over reports things become far easier they begin to trust you you need to be able to build that trust right i think that's that's i mean essentially you have to see things from their yeah. lens otherwise uh, yeah. the job becomes tough but it's interesting i mean i think most startups don't give enough importance to something like this yeah. uh, especially early on in the journey they don't really think about this they all yeah. think product market fit product. and what not right so although they everyone thinks growth everyone thinks like oh i need to get a million users but that's you know? tough to do without brand right yeah so so they they don't uh, i mean how would you ascribe importance of brand and strategy versus pure like facebook ads or like oh i need to put this much money into paid advertising oh my god <laughs> i want to tear my hair out yeah. right <laughs> so so. <laughs> so the moment you've thought of a product or the moment you've thought of a name the moment you've thought about what you're really going to do your brand already is alive It's the fact that you haven't realized how you're going to market it or what your long-term vision is. So the moment you've said you want to do a Facebook ad, you're doing that because you want to build a brand. So I simply see it as, you know, branding gives, you know, the promises you've made and brand equity is how well you have lived up to that promise. So the day you have your product idea in place, your brand is already in place. Mm-hmm. It's up to you whether you're going to build a long-term marketing uh, strategy for it. a long term you know target audience strategy for it a long term sales strategy for it all these combined will help you build it there's no escape the brand is already there it's just whether you're working consciously towards it or you're not working consciously towards it and then people want to build an apple and they give us examples like i want to become the apple of x i mean oh come on yaar at least research how many decades it's taken for a brand to become what they are Are you consistent with your communication? Are you willing to commit yourself to that kind of hard work? Right. Sometimes it's not really about the money. It's about your vision and it's about your commitment to be able to live up to that vision. Yeah, not to not to keep changing your positioning on certain things Absolutely. maybe. Yeah. So you know, as you said, so you can have your logo if it's close to your heart, it's okay. I'm okay if you insist, you know, the orange needs to be blue. Let's just go with it. That's all right. <laughs> But are you willing to commit to the values? Are you going to commit about what you stand for? Are you going to commit to customer service excellence? You know, these are values which are important to the brand. And how you behave internally and externally to your partners is how your brand is going to get built. Interesting. So, basically what you're trying to say, what you're doing is making people obviously look uh, inside, like look at, you know, what kind of stuff is happening with their culture. I know we talk about culture and culture fit a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh people in India I know have in the last so many years of the startup hoopla have been trying to copy Silicon Valley culture and they look at I mean all the all the wrong articles talk about how cool their office is and how much free food it has <laughs> and that becomes the culture. I mean let's as face it I mean I haven't seen I haven't worked in large enough organizations to sort of uh, understand whether there is a culture story which you know permeates beyond the core group i mean i've always worked in very tight uh, yes. small teams which yeah i mean if you're not on the same page it will not work and right. it's very obvious but how do you uh, do you see that also as part of branding and strategy is that important do you think that yeah. attitude of the team sure so i was rolling my eyes really hard which the you know audience can't hear you know see it obviously when you kept saying silicon valley i rolled them so hard i can see my brain but uh, um, i want to give you an example so i was consulting with this uh, really large really large organization and uh, they had over 5 and a half thousand people and they brought me in and the uh, rmd said uh, hey i want you to change all the recruiting designs you know urgently have this done in the next two weeks and i said why 
he said because you know we seem to have 27% attrition rate and i was like at 5 and a half thousand people one third of your organization is leaving all the time this has nothing to do with communication design something is wrong mm-hmm. right it's mm-hmm. something is not working and then it took us almost over 8 to 9 months we did manage to bring down attrition rate to below 3% in the following year but it was a long road to finding out why the referrals were not working why the recruitment agencies were not working why the vision of the leaders was not getting translated to the team via the managers why there was a lot of trust issues between the team and the managers and the entire referral system the entire recruitment system was completely flawed wow. and therefore the answer to the fact that if your culture if your belief and your vision some of the most loved entrepreneurs you know you can take them as examples and you know whomever whether you you know look at a fresh desk you look at a paytm a lot of the founders lead it with that passion with that love with that sincerity and you know give you an impression of carrying their ethics and they walk their talk and that's incredibly important because that's really what gets translated down to the team level Right. So yes, you know taking a brand forward is extremely important along with the values you really believe in. Right. No, yeah. so all of that makes a um, matters, right? Yeah. Your uh, like since you mentioned customer service. Yeah. Customer service is the one thing which that's people your, Yeah, that's yeah. your first interaction it's, with the brand, right? Or that's the most yeah. thing that's the most that you interact with the brand. And yet more often than not as if, especially if you look at Twitter I think all the complaints about uh, on Twitter customer are about service. customer service. Yeah. Yeah. It's become yeah. a portal for customer it service is, for brands. For some, so, in some ways it absolutely is. For many large organizations again, you know, we uh, actually held trainings where we taught the people who answered the first calls hmm. uh, from people to be very polite and to smile and answer because the person on the other end can hear the tone of your voice yeah. and figure out and we we also taught them that nobody who comes for an interview should wait for more than 10 to 15 minutes yeah. and if they have to someone has to go out and tell them that hey we are really sorry what's up would you like to eat something have you had your lunch and it just improved the brand image tremendously because people said oh they are so polite they're so nice it's not necessary that 100% of people working there are nice but that's right. the first impression right. first touch point mm-hmm. and they're like wow they're incredibly nice yeah yeah you know what i didn't get chosen so what you know ah, it was a great experience right everybody's always smiling so now so that makes a difference so much. No, that's culture yeah. stuff man that's just that that is culture right so I that's mean, branding that, yeah that's uh, part of your yeah. you know brand image you really how you position yourself very interesting i mean the yeah. small things which probably a lot of people have yeah. overlook right yeah. that's yeah. that's where it matters that's why you need experts that's uh. why you need me look me up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no no that's true yeah we as and i know this as founders we are actually too close to uh, the values yeah. of whatever whatever yeah. little brand we uh, think we understand mm. that we uh, most of the time can't see it from the outside yeah. right and you do need a fresh pair of eyes to actually i think what happens with a lot of founders is we internalize what we think of as our values and we just we don't really communicate them as deeply as we should yes. or as effectively as we should so i always think like you know responsiveness is an extremely important thing and i'm very responsive with my own kind of this right somebody sends me an email they get a reply from me like within the next day at most but uh, that's not something uh, it's something that i found that you know uh, you have to kind of make that explicit that that's the expectation that you need to be this and i feel like that's kind of a thing that a lot of people do miss out on Yeah so there's another thing which uh, I noticed and this mm. is taking off from your point uh, there's a lot of i in an entrepreneur also because we are you know we we perceive ourselves to be lone warriors and we are mm-hmm. battling and you know we want to lead we are the general in chief mm. but uh, at some point it's also important to be able to listen to what the team has to say and make sure that there's a consensus at least amongst the core team you know about your values and how you see the path forward mm-hmm. large organizations or large companies are not built if you want your startup to be you know to scale up if you want your startup to sustain then you need to be able to bring in a combined vision of the team and be able to listen to them and be able to translate their vision into your vision as well converge that and then present that as a company vision yeah yeah not I just agree. your yeah i mean yeah. you should be a leader as a founder yeah but 
you should take in yeah uh, inputs from everyone you should, around yeah, you i agree well. with and that that's, true. that's yeah. very true yeah. I, I, again i mean i think that is uh yeah i mean like i think that's essential if you don't do that you're kind of what's the point of having people if you're not going to listen to them i mean I, you know i mean like that's to kind of put it in a little cold way but i mean like if you have this many people you're working with you thought that they are going to be part of what you're going to do then if you don't listen to them then why have them oh, oh yeah and we yeah, we've spoken true. about how even in previous episodes we've spoken that as a founder at one point your job is actually to hire people smarter than you yeah of course so which you yeah. should be doing if your company is growing in the right direction you should be hiring people mm-hmm. smarter than you uh to help run it so yeah but sometimes our passion becomes our biggest enemy you yeah. know because we are so blindfolded because we've probably sacrificed something in our life or a part of our life to become entrepreneurs right and then we are so blinded by it that sometimes we overlook what the team or the other core team members might be able to add to our vision and then i always i always counsel the founders yeah sometimes i play that role as well where we sit down and say yeah i understand this is tough you know but i really think we should bring in everybody in the room and let's hear out what they have to say so i think a good strategy or a branding consultant should also be able to um have a bit of the soft communication skills right. where you're able to get across to the founder and the team and be able to counsel them as and when right. needed interesting interesting mm-hmm. so i i think on that we're going to take a quick break but okay. when we come back i want to talk a little bit more about how this matters right this personal understanding yeah. people really matters to this the kind of stuff you've been doing and we'll get into more about what you're doing right now sure what's the best new restaurant in town which bar sucked what's the worst new hindi film What's the most obscure thing to do on the weekend? And what's the most interesting new walking tour? If you want to know how to make the most of Bombay, listen to the podcast by the dailypow.com. We are Pranuti, Amit, and Purva. We're your guide to what to do, see, and eat in the city. You can find new episodes of the podcast every Monday on the IVM podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer and on the dailypow.com. Cool. All right. So interesting. So like you just said off <laughs> the mic a lot of startup guys uh, probably don't want to be hearing all this being told to them but it's your job and uh, no, i and think yeah, valuable bad. right i mean like you shouldn't always i mean like you want to listen to stuff that you don't want to hear right but the fact that you've been doing this uh, means that obviously a lot of people need this kind of advice right and yeah. i think uh, i think the ones you've helped have only gotten better so uh, kudos to you you're clearly doing stuff right on on the marketing branding front and helping a lot of companies so i'd really hope so yeah, yeah. thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah but more so coming to the, what you're doing now and i think it's sort of uh, it's interesting that this is a lot of your job otherwise uh, on the marketing branding front involves understanding people and communicating with people and understanding uh, you know how they interact with others in the real world via their products or via their uh, sure. you know and also i think that's that what makes it very interesting for what you're doing now when you're actually after your personal experiences uh, in interacting with the world of social media and how you know how the world of cyberspace in general has become so complex and all the people on there are basically an extension of regular society around us right but there are some unique ways in which the way we interact online has created some very unique characters sure. and uh, i think that's what i want to come back and talk about more about on this show uh, yep. because you have that expertise so right now if, like you were mentioning you're leading an initiative about about understanding yeah. and correcting cyber bullying and cyber harassment especially yeah. for women and children online and you're officially engaged with the indian police now yeah so congratulations i think it's a very interesting and very i mean commendable effort and uh, initiative that you're doing i think uh, it's one of a kind right now mm-hmm. in india and i think it's very relevant and very important that uh, this topic is addressed now uh, sooner rather than later because so much has been happening uh, in this space for a while so yeah. why don't you give us a little background on sure. how big this deal is and how seriously important that uh, something like this is made more aware yeah and uh, yeah if you could tell us about that So just taking a step backward and just uh, telling you giving you a bit of background and for you know people who are listening in so despite all my experience of 16 years of you know advising some of the largest global brands and 
having the kind of network I have, having the kind of friends I have, and you're sitting here in front of me and having all the kind of uh, relationship influence I might have in this industry. About two years ago, I got hit by a very severe case of cyber stalking, which started online, but, you know, extended itself offline. And through I went through a lot of emotional trauma and abuse. And um, that, you know, just broke me and I escaped a death trap. And last year on 26th of June, I did stand up and talk about it because I felt I owed it to myself and to the people around me that I should stand up. I should own up to my experience, also make an example out of myself. And hopefully it would help a few other people right. be more careful and be more aware. What happened was, Shiladitya, that within um, seven days of publishing that blog, it received a few million views. And I received over 350 plus stories of abuse in the next few weeks. And I was startled. I said, oh my God, it's happening to everybody. And many of those names include a lot of our common friends, so-called successful entrepreneurs, businessmen and women. And I was shocked. And I realized that it's happening everywhere. But maybe people don't have the courage or maybe they're very shameful of their experience and they don't want to talk about it. That hit me hard. And I wanted to do something more than just sharing my story. So I started spending a lot of time with the cybercrime police in our country. I spent a lot of time with psychiatrists, psychologists to understand what really triggers uh, somebody to abuse someone from behind veil of anonymity. And how can we... Uh, learn to use digital media more responsibly because you know digital media today is all pervasive right a lot of people don't even identify whatsapp as an internet based app anymore it's just sms right mm -hmm. i'm sure your parents use it young yeah. children use it you know teenagers use it there's an ipad and there's an ipod you know everything is everything is internet based so we can't be fearful we have to be careful and to just give you some statistics over 70% of women users today in India have reported being harassed at some point or another online. Over 70%. And in my experience, amongst the hundreds of women I've spoken to, it's over 90% or maybe even 100%. Why just any women, you know, look at uh, celebrities today. Justin right. Bieber quit uh, Instagram. Because, you know, Sophie Rich was being abused. Ed Sheeran, he quit yesterday. He quit Twitter saying, I can't handle the abuse anymore. So it's all around us. Somebody needed to stand up and take a, take a tough stand on this issue and talk about it. And more importantly, work along with authorities, not against them, not a revolution, but somewhere where we can form better policies bring about some changes and handling cyber complaints. Right. So, yeah, that's what I'm really doing. And uh, I have named it Akanksha Against Harassment. And uh, I've been doing active workshops for the last couple of months. Covered six cities already, going to five more in August. And, wow. uh, yeah. Wonderful. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously I know uh, last year when you announced, uh, you know, about, I uh, wrote the blog post and, Obviously, all of us also, uh, we, we still are supporting you in this movement. And I think, and I've understood it since last year, I've understood it a little more about how it is a serious issue. And like you just said, it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. It happens so much that it should definitely be addressed and people need to understand the difference between what is okay on social media and what yeah. is seriously getting into harassment territory, right? Yeah. I mean, we... Uh, I think a lot of it is to do with, I mean, I mean this is an open question to both of you. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of it is to do with how we take things so casually online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We think that, you know, I can, I can say something and get away with it. There are so many people who are just trolls. We disregard them. Yeah. You know, so the fact that we take everything on a very face value sort of a level, is that what makes this, what makes us think that, no, it can never happen to me and I'll never take it seriously? And So, I, you know what I mean? Like uh, when we were talking before we started, right? And uh, at that point in time, you, uh, the, you brought up the idea that, uh, that it's not necessary that interaction occurs before it 
crosses the line, right? That to me is kind of eye-opening, right? I mean, like in the sense that uh, I feel I, that that is something which I'm like, oh my God, okay, all right, how do you even know, right? I mean, like how is this something that you can even realize that this is, that you, either uh, somebody is behaving inappropriately in some way or you, how, how, I mean, like if you're the recipient of that, how are you supposed to know, right? I mean, like, and that you, you to me is scary, know. right? You can't yeah. know. That's why you have to be careful. You have to be cognizant of the fact that, oh, if I'm talking about where I'm going online, mm-hmm. people will know. Yep. Someone will know. Yep. True. If I'm leaving, like, serial, if I'm, like, manually checking in on some apps here and there, and I have, and if it's public, those people will know. Yep. So, if I'm voluntarily sharing information, or involuntarily, just because I don't realize I am that you should be aware that hey people can see it and if people can see it it can be used against yeah true that's true yeah so just to set context uh, what I was saying is that I was stalked by somebody for a couple of years and uh, he traced all my likes dislikes what kind of forums I went to and where I was speaking what are my interests and how I love animals And therefore, he created a whole persona, a whole digital persona, which mirrored exactly the things I would like and I would dislike. Okay. I take complete responsibility for checking in, you know, to the places I went or for taking pictures with close friends at home and, you know, posting it in real time. There is actually absolutely no need for doing that. A few weeks ago, uh, I think it was, I don't remember the city, a little child got uh, kidnapped from outside his school because some other mother posted a picture of her child in that school uniform outside oh, wow. the school and he was somewhere in the background and a pedophile took fancy to him and he got picked up because he put two and two together the school uniform showed which school he went to the timing showed you know when the school gets off i mean what is the real need of doing that you've got to be careful but in that situation, I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, you know, what could the victim who was victimized in this case, what could they do? Because it had nothing to do with them, right? Absolutely. So you are not to be posting a young toddler's, young children's pictures online. And the police says this all the time. You are. Yeah. And there's it's, no it's private. It's not so much about you personally being careful. Yeah. It's also about spreading the awareness about this. Yeah. Right. I think. Coming back to what you were saying, right, and how what happened with Akansha as well, it's not so much about always someone who will stalk you and try to harm you or kidnap you. It could right. be someone who's just trying to make you believe in something which is false. Yeah. You know, if you, it's not also about your location. Like she said, it's also about publicly talking about your genuine feelings right. and likes and dislikes and how that can be used against you. Yeah. If they had to, you know, if they could be someone just trying to get close to you, just trying, it could be reasons for whatever. It could be post- selfish reasons, financial reasons. Right. It could be, you know, or nefarious in any other way as well. So basically people are the same. I think what we were earlier talking about, right? Yeah. Does anonymity encourage this? Yes. That's, that's, that's yeah. where it, that's what yeah. society as it's, as in general, have always had right. good guys and bad guys. Now, this empowers the bad guys a little more easily. This whole platform yeah. and the whole and cyberspace and online in general, sadly, while it is amazing and yeah. it empowers the good guys so much, right. it also empowers the bad guys equally well. Interesting. All right, let me ask you, so this is slightly tangential, sure. but uh, some of this, and I'd like your thoughts on this, right? This thing that happened with CNN and Twitter and Donald Trump recently. Hmm. Right. And uh, the article that CNN did later where they th- supposedly threatened the guy with exposure that we will say who you are because you said all these horrible racist things. I think that they should expose the guy no matter what. Right. I mean, like, is the where would you stand on something like that? Where, what, what do you think? See, again, I'm asking you because I have no idea what's right and what's wrong anymore. My mind is completely this. What? Where, where do you think? I, the, think I think someone who's posted something right. should take responsibility for it. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've posted it right. against whatever religion or whatever or right. whatever, if you've said it and you've posted it, you said it. Right. That's on you. Even if you said it anonymously, you should Even still be. Even if you said it, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Right. See, I don't understand this problem people have with doxing people, right? I mean, yeah. like, if you say uh, something online in a nasty way, 
what gives you protection from people finding out who you are and deciding I don't want to associate with that the same way that you would in real life, right? If I hear somebody saying something nasty in real life, yeah. I want to stay away from them. I don't want anything to do with them. So I don't... Un- I, um, people think they'll get away with it. Yeah. And that's the biggest weapon. So in real life, you can't get away, right? We're sitting in a room yeah. with a couple of people. If you're nasty to me, I know who you are. Yeah. And I know it right at that moment. Right. But then, you know, when you're anonymous, you know, you feel you'll get away. And very yeah. often people do get away. And that's what really encourages them and it emboldens them. Yeah. The moment we start making a few examples of these guys, right, you know, yeah. and tell them, hey, you can't get away. Yeah, Times no, have changed. I agree. I, I, yeah. I, so I, I feel very, so I mean, like it's something, you know, uh, there are some like there are these standard positions that people think that people who are tech savvy should take, right? And this is one of them. That an anti-doxing position is one that most people who are tech savvy take uh, believe that that should be that. You know, if somebody's posting anonymously, you should respect their anonymity. And I'm just like, no, why? I mean, it depends. Again, I shouldn't be saying it depends. Huh. It shouldn't depend. It should matter. Right. Uh, if even though you were anonymous, you know it's gone through a system which can be used against you to find you. Yeah. So. If you are found out, it is your responsibility. Yeah. If you're not found out, you did get away with it. I mean, that's yeah. the sad truth. No, but I don't have a problem with an organization going out and trying to find out who somebody is. And that seems to be what a lot of people have an issue with, right? That CNN devoted resources to going out to find out who this guy is. And I think that they should. That's their job. They're journalists, right? I mean, like... Is if this- that person has done something directly... I mean, see, now the thing here was he didn't attack CNN. Directly. No, he didn't attack CNN directly, but but he mocked them. He mocked them, and but he was so he was retweeted by the president of the United States, <laughs> and no, and that's oh, how well. this whole thing, the story in itself. No, oh, but well. that's how this whole thing came. That's how right. this whole thing blew up, yeah, right? He sure. was retweeted by uh, Donald Trump, and uh, once he retweeted, people went into his post history, right. and his post history was full of really nasty racist stuff. So that's why, I mean, like at that point, I mean, like, you know, he is of legitimate interest as a news story. So I don't see any reason why CNN shouldn't go after to find out who he is. I think, I'm sorry, I think I derailed this conversation completely. (laughs) No problem. (laughs) No, no, the point is, again, owning up to your actions online. Right. If you're a bad guy, you obviously want all the sorts of protection and ways to hide yourself. Right. But what can we do as good guys who potentially can get victimized. I think bringing that aspect of the conversation back. That's where knowing that this is out there. There are people out there who will be making remarks about nasty things, who will be attacking you directly, who will be trying to use information you share online against you. There are all sorts of people who you'll interact with online. I would say, where do you make a stand so that no one can harm you? Hmm. You're not trying to be anonymous. You're not trying to be... You know, you still want your social persona out there. Yeah. No one's telling you quit the internet. You right. actually can't, like you, you can't. said. Yeah. You can't quit the internet. Yeah. Even That's if you take away all our phones and mm-hmm. gadgets, you it'll find a way. Yeah. Absolutely. So and, how yeah. do you how do you protect yourself? I think is that are the basic steps. And uh, also, like I will, we'll come back to how are the authorities now that since you're officially associated with the yeah. police, how are they uh, sort of taking steps? Yeah. Or what should people know what their powers are? Like what can be done? Yeah. How To what extent are the authorities already helping uh, people? So if you could help us out with sure. understanding that. So I'll just break this into a couple of points. And first and foremost, it's incredibly important for us to fight this menace of cyber abuse because studies have shown that this abuse online is as traumatic as you would have experienced a physical mm-hmm. abuse. And sometimes the scars that don't show are the toughest to heal. Right. And uh, I would like everyone listening to this to also listen to Monica Lewinsky's fab TED talk called The Price of Shame. Right. Because what happens in this room can be contained within four or five of us within these four walls. But what happens online, you know, there are no boundaries, there are no geographies. Within five minutes, people can tear you down and raise you to the ground. And that never goes away. Right. right. So how do you deal with that trauma? And it's shown that in teenagers, over 47% of teenagers who were abused online, they showed tenden- uh, suicidal tendencies. That is serious. That is bloody serious. One in three teenagers has reported abuse. And these are only the reported cases I'm talking about. Maybe some kids are too scared to even admit it. And only 50% of them have the courage to speak to their parents. That's how serious it is. 
and therefore it's very very important for us to understand a few basic steps of how we can be careful mm-hmm. how we can be a little more intelligent i you know i'm never tired of people saying oh my god you know authorities are doing nothing police is doing nothing cyber crime is shit no it doesn't work like that it's your life you have to take responsibility for it you have to stop posting live check-ins you have to stop leaving those live digital footprints of exactly where you're going what time you exited a bar when did you take an uber there are people who show their locations of where they are taking an uber from and where they are getting dropped off how much sillier can you really be <laughs> why would you tell people you are you know you are in us from you know 10th to 15th of july aren't you leaving your parents back home aren't you leaving your house vulnerable to burglars right. robbers aren't your parents at risk i mean these are some very very small basic uh, guidelines which i think anyone with a bit of common sense should be you know adhering to and first and foremost there's no private and you know public uh, you know settings anything right. you post online everybody is going to get to see it right? right so first you need to understand that so you can't complain about the fact oh but my you know setting was private then i don't know how did this go out anything you put online yeah, any my... work you put online you know it's a free source that, everybody is going to get to know of it right that, that's my rule if it's online is public it does, there, there's no it uh, even whatsapp assume it's public everything online is public it's crazy i mean just to interject here and take a point off of how everything you say online is uh, rather there's no public and private setting like you just said uh is you guys know about the samsung smart tvs right. yeah, yeah. yeah and the notice samsung actually issued that do not talk about anything sensitive around our tvs <laughs> because we are listening <laughs> yeah. that's that's just scary when the act, when the actual company sort of issues a you know like a disclaimer right and more so just to like you know, help people that hey listen our smart TVs are always on they can see you they can hear you uh, it's just crazy and including uh, same thing with our smartphones right yep. uh, if you have okay google enable or if on. you have uh, I hope no one's phone started. Uh, I'm sure many people's hey. phone started. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, hey Alexa, enabled. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say hello to Siri also? <laughs> hey Siri. And uh, also, what about uh, apps like Snapchat? Oh mm. my God! Not only can you see your location, you can literally act. almost accurately say which room of your house you are in uh, the new mapping oh, damn update now which that mapping off yeah. yeah you know you might as well invite the kidnapper home and make like a meeting invite you know with the guy and they <laughs> did uh, they they turned it on by default from what i understand so it's an opt out so if yeah. you have not opted out you're, you're already opted already in, in right exactly yeah so which, i want to make two more points out here uh, uh, one uh, levels of education so i think especially younger teenage crowd um, you know school going college going crowd it's very very important to educate them because they are the most aggressive users of digital media they're also the most vulnerable and the most reckless yeah. because they are at an age where they are overconfident that nothing's going to happen ah it's okay it's fine chalta hai no problem and there's a snapchat and there's an instagram and there's all of that and that's also one of the reasons that in my next phase of workshops i'm going to some uh, large schools and colleges where i want the teachers the principals and the parents to be a part of it because if the parents don't understand it the children are not going to talk to them they are not going to confide in them yeah and it's i think what's also always been the case is yeah the younger generation thinks that they know tech better yes that sort of always led to them saying that listen you don't know this stuff right. i know it better and that's why educating yeah. even the seniors yeah. is important Absolutely. because they need to be having able to have a rational conversation about what is what are the real threats absolutely uh, and otherwise of, the kids are not going to listen i, I spend a lot, sorry uh, i spend a lot of time talking to my friends about this kind of stuff because i am more tech uh savvy than most of them are right and all of them are con- constantly kind of worried about what their kids are doing on their phones and this and that so i mean i spent a lot of time talking to them about this stuff yeah and no no so they should yeah. they should know the ground reality yeah. they should know yeah. technical no I mean, not without getting too technical but as an experience they should know what kind of stuff their kids are using and what are the pitfalls of all of mm-hmm. them yeah. like the snapchat thing you mentioned yeah. if parents don't use snapchat probably they wouldn't they'll, they yeah. wouldn't, they'll and, not know ever and also what is important is once they know the vulnerabilities 
they also know that if they ever get victimized what are the steps to be taken yeah. and also educationers teachers principals deans they need to start looking at this very very seriously and actually make it a part of curriculum right. because you know a lot of education today is happening on computers on smartphones yeah. on sending you know their projects online so it will be really nice if they take a step forward and because children also look at them with a great with great respect you know so the authority is saying it, the education is saying it together so i plan to go to colleges along with senior cyber crime officers so when they see a police officer stand on stage and say hey i'm here to help you don't worry children look at them starry eyed right. you know and they they have that fear that respect and that really helps in building this process so that's very important and if there's one thing i say in all my workshops and if there's one thing anybody wants to take away from the entire conversation i've had today the most important aspect while there's a legal point of view there's a judicial point of view what i really want to say is if you ever get victimized and it happens it happens to a lot of us it's happened to me and i'm a living example of it please remember that the shame of abuse never lies with the victim the shame of abuse always lies with the perpetrator the day you stand up and you speak up you've actually handed that shame back to the perpetrator so no abuser no rapist no troll in this country should walk free because you are ashamed of your experience that cannot happen you you know there are some stories you owe it to yourself to tell and you right. owe it to yourself to stand up in your life life is too short we're going to die any moment do you want to live under fear do you want to live with shame what will people say what will that aunt say that uncle say they don't give a damn about you you need to take responsibility of your life you need to stand up and talk you need to inform your friends parents confidants you need to go to the authorities and you need to get your life on track yeah now that's very important in fact and that's where i think uh, the kind of initiative you're doing and having the backing of authority like you said yeah and the start of the conversation you know we spoke about how most people say that oh police don't do anything yeah the, what can they do they just don't know anything they don't know uh, we don't have the tech and so on but i think we were speaking about earlier how that's not true the police there are some really yeah. good cops on cyber crime uh, there's yeah. some really good tech being used in india to actually you know really get to the bottom of things yeah i think whenever uh, there have been publicly discussed cases in cyber crime most of them actually show how you know the, if you are a bad guy you will be found yeah, yeah. and uh, so i think that knowing that and having the confidence of the backing of that authority uh is also going to embolden a lot of people to speak up right when this does happen yeah so i want to tell you that you know people just make these sweeping statements saying that oh the police is doing nothing have you been to a police station have you met the cops did you try filing a complaint did you try escalating your complaint because somebody was not hearing and all authorities are a reflection of our society just the way amongst 10 people five will be incredibly nice two will be okay maybe one person's really mean to you in every authority you'll see it's the same ratio so if things didn't work out at one place you have to escalate that today most of the senior police officers especially cyber crime police officers are there online they are available on social media you can tweet it out to them you can go to their facebook pages in my experience of last one year of working with different state police officers they are really empathetic they are very very sharp they have the technology for it you know maybe you don't know their priorities these are the guys who are identifying terrorists who are being you know tutored online these are the guys bursting you know drug cartels they are very very sharp and they are very determined and very very dedicated so what you really need to do is not just make sweeping statements or be disappointed if one particular officer has not been nice to you the law is actually on your side i've worked with the senior most you know advocates of this country now they're actually on your side they actually want to help you but you should really have the courage and the perseverance to see it through before we started i told you the problem is that internet is leaping and our law is crawling to catch up to it right so a lot of the sections a lot of ipc sections which were meant for other crimes you know they were finding out your fingerprints and you know blood samples and you know your hair samples now the same laws 
are being adapted for cyber crimes where there's no footprint and there's no blood sample and any of that right it's happening that convergence point is happening by the time it's happening you know a few crimes are already you know right. leaping forward so it's happening but you eventually you're responsible for your life and so you know if you if you feel you're not being heard you can go to a higher authority you feel one lawyer is not working state is going to provide a lawyer for you right and there's so many case studies please don't believe everything you hear in the media because media mm-hmm. is going to talk about stories or cases which are not solved because only controversial and sensational cases get the eyeballs but there are tons of people out there who are willing to help there are tons of ngos but eventually you should want to do something out of your case and eventually you have to break that stigma of shame of society wo char log they don't exist right. you know eventually it's you and your life right right no and it's it's such a important topic that i think the more we talk about it also right in all our uh, in all our conversations related to how you can not just protect yourself but how you conduct yourself on yeah. i think the fact that there are cyber bullies and trolls and yeah. uh so much hate mongering online uh, is also because people only get that back absolutely like if if no one if 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 you basically just keep feeding the trolls as they say they will just become more trolls yeah so yeah i mean i i don't think i i think we're But all then again i mean like is staying disengaged completely the right way to deal with this as well because that doesn't sound to be the right way based on what we're talking so, about yeah. right now so there's a mid path in everything yeah. so trolls in my opinion with all due respect is honestly the um least serious of the problems when it comes Correct. to cyber right. abuse Correct. because right. there's stalking and there is threatening and blackmail and morphing and you know there's a lot which is really happening death threats rape threats a lot of that which is happening but yeah you know to be honest if you really think that your life is getting all consumed because of you know so few trolls then uh, you're doing something wrong one uh, <laughs> there are going to be trolls and it's serious i agree but you know look at our politicians look at the prime minister look at so many other politicians who get trolled all the time and this it's massive it's serious and it's I'm all sure, day it it's is. all day so somewhere you have to also decide that uh, yes i'm going to be opinionated i'm an influencer i'm going to take a stand i'm not going to take anybody abusing me online but there's a thin line between those who are just trolling harmlessly am i really going to engage with them or do i not want to engage with them yes but if somebody is saying that you know if you say something and you come home you know and rape you and people say that to women then that's serious and i'm going to take action yes that's i think yeah? that's what you have uh, yeah, so you have to correct. know you have to know the battles you want to take on just like mm-hmm. in life if i'm walking down and you know somebody you know i hear somebody whispering i won't bother i hear somebody whistling i'll turn around and slap that guy yeah. so you really got to decide the battle you want to take on and uh, how far you want to go with it no that's what that's and being aware of the fact yeah. that this is happening and this is serious and it will happen so you need yeah. to be prepared that okay if this happens i'm going to take this action if this happens i'm probably going to make sure that what can i do so that it doesn't get repeated on a personal note i want to yeah. ask you since since we're having this conversation and just to help people contextualize how serious this is yeah. and i know maybe uh, amit you and i as mm. guys don't face so much cyber bullying in the same way a woman faces online yeah. uh why is it so bad what what do you think causes this and i know it's much misogyny, worse for women misogyny man misogyny it's, seriously i mean it is um, and it's really bad for women so yeah. the, mm. how how do you think like even as men who don't face it and who might be listening and saying that hey this doesn't affect me uh, it will never yeah. happen to me but hey you have women in your lives yeah. how how do we uh, prepare yeah. ourselves as well as those uh, the women in our lives so, to yeah. how do you help them that's a brilliant question actually and i'm glad you asked um so misogyny is not uh, the simple answer i okay. think there are levels and levels of there are uh, some very interesting studies on what really triggers cyber bullying and cyber abuse and i'll be happy to share it online but uh, it's levels of sometimes it's mental dysfunctionality it's stress it's frustration it's inability to express yourself in real life world it's the situation at home there're just too many reasons but in all my workshops i always encourage equal participation of men and the reason why that's important is that sometimes the person who's abusing is male right, right. and the person who's receiving it is a woman and vice versa but 
women and children are more vulnerable to it right. i'm not saying men don't get abused they do over 16 to 18% of men have been seriously harassed or abused and you know lives are smashed and there's blackmail and threat and all of that happening wow. but uh, one submission and one humble request i would make to all my male friends and all the male entrepreneurs founders everybody i work with is when somebody has the courage amongst your circle to stand up and speak the first thing you need to do is to unconditionally be empathetic and try and understand it and then try and support it in every manner you can so i said unconditionally first understand empathetic right. what the situation right. really right. is and um because if you don't do that then more and more women more and more youngsters are going to shy away from standing up and talking because they'll feel that they are being ridiculed or not being understood so that is very very important and if you do see you know any kind of abuse or harassment happening to somebody who's not immediately in your network of family or friends i think it's still your responsibility to you yeah. know ask that person hey i noticed this do you need help you know yeah. would you like me to step in or you know are you being harassed are you feeling safe you know are you okay i don't think it takes too much it just takes being a nice person to ask the other person so right and if we just did that much i think we would be building a safer environment for everybody for your wife for your children for your sister for your mother for everybody right no and it's it's a very relevant again conversation overall i think throughout the year we should be talking about this but even so this week i just i just re- realized mm. uh, how you know silicon valley is also up in arms with so much of yeah. all these yeah. harassment cases and a lot of women are speaking yeah. up and a lot of men are also realizing that hey all the like you can think you are being nice and you can yeah. think that you're all good but you don't realize when you've crossed the line i think that's a very uh, overarching topic which is sort of coming yeah. out that a lot of men just don't realize when they're crossing the line and yeah. it's easier to do that when it's anonymous and it's Absolutely. much easier yeah. online than it is in person yeah and uh, even that's to be aware of that i think that's also something where absolutely you small, know like, yeah small conscious steps of when you are texting someone what time you're messaging somebody what are the, what is the medium you're using you know to reach out to the other person we're all part of the problem and we're all part of the solution right so whether it's men or women the only thing is that if the larger you know society and larger you know number of men stood up in support I just think that it will build a far more robust secure and safe environment for everyone. No, correct. I think uh, it's it's our responsibility as the larger side of the voice or population mm-hmm. online. I think uh, definitely it's our responsibility to make that happen. Yeah. So I hope a lot of people listening and overall I think with more and more of this conversation being spoken about in all sorts of forums including the kind of workshops you're doing which is great. will build more awareness will obviously uh, mm-hmm. help a lot of uh, people understand the extent to which ri- lives can be ruined i mean it's serious it's not something you should can cons- yeah. just uh, shy away from it's not something you should hide it's something you should talk about encourage conversations about and uh, yeah and help people around you uh, yeah and um, you know sometimes people ask me and you know people who've seen my journey closely for last one year they say that this problem is so big right Right. And you know one person taking a stand and I often tell them that usually it takes only one person to stand up and you know speak about something. Yeah. It takes And then and from there yeah. is where the rest of the story uh, unfolds and Absolutely. helps everyone else like you said yourself one person led to what 350 Yeah. Now and now more. <laughs> I have over 700 plus 800 plus stories of abuse and uh, Yeah I'm launching a um, uh, I'm I've launched a website where you know it's a it's a dedicated place for your go to place for all kinds of resources to read on what the lawyers are saying what the police officers are saying it's a kangshar uh, against harassment.com and I'm you know they're going to be regular podcasts you know from people like yourself and your team and what we're doing right now and you know please go there read and be uh, aware and be uh, fearless and uh, there's a chat line as well so happy to talk to anybody who may want to ask any questions superb Excellent. i think i think that's a great way to uh, sort of end our show and 
you know give out this information so i think i i'm so happy uh, we were able to talk about this today akanshans thank you so much for being here and uh, we hope to have you back uh, maybe at the end of your tour of talking about more experiences what happened and uh, let's let's hope uh, we also we have a slack channel guys yes we do uh, you should join it uh, we had real conversation on it this week yes so please come in uh, talk about experiences uh, guys and girls please also <laughs> there's so much so many women in tech just like Absolutely. you uh, who are doing so much i would love to hear from everyone uh, yeah. also interesting more topics what yeah. you guys want to hear about please uh, just ask to be invited to the slack channel it's on ivmpodcast.com slash shunya1 and if you're on iTunes also please rate and review and give us a nice five stars yes and uh, yeah so happy to uh, keep doing this and uh, we're almost at our 10th episode next, next week. week yes and uh, <laughs> should be fun yes. thank you so much Akanksha this was really special and I'm hoping uh, we had fun today All Thank right. you. Thanks Shila Aditya. This was great and I really do hope that you keep inviting me back and we keep having interesting conversations. Thank you very much and thanks for listening in. Thank you. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Sorry to say but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun. As you can see there's death, destruction and chaos taking place all around us. But don't you worry, food and drinks will be served shortly and I would recommend checking out IVM Podcasts to get some of your favorite Indian podcasts. We'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over. Thank you.